Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to add the concept of an app to our engine. So what that's going to entail is moving the int main into hippo.lib and having an app be defined by the user of the engine, in this case hippo editor. This app will have endpoints like for initialize and shutdown, um, render, uh, update, all that sort of stuff. And this is going to let the engine call into the app whenever it, it makes sense to do so. For example, whenever the app should render itself or whenever the app should run its update loop. Since the, the core game loop runs on the engine side of things, we need this sort of endpoint to call these methods on so that the user of the engine can define all of those themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our app.h under the hippo folder. And we'll start with our namespace as always. And here we'll have class app public private. Now our app is not going to do anything in terms of initialization or shutdown. We're going to have methods that the engine will call on the app to do this. So we'll have a virtual void initialize. And I'm not making this a pure virtual class because I, it's up to the client to decide if they need to override initialize or shutdown or anything like that. So I'll just do it this way. Initialize and shutdown and then we'll have our virtual void uh, update and virtual void render. And we'll have a video on update and sort of delta time and fixed updates and that sort of thing. Uh, for now, we'll just not pass anything in. So now that we have our app defined, we need our main.cpp, which is the user of the engine, to create an app. Class, let's say editor, is a public hippo app. Right, and now that I am a class of app, I can define that void initialize, for example, as an override. And then here I can do things, right? Uh, same with shutdown. Same with update. Oops. And render. Okay, so I also mentioned the main is gonna go away, right? And the main will go away. What I'm gonna do is add another file under hippo. We'll call it main.h. And the main.cpp from the user of the engine will also include main.h. So let's just take this and drop it in here, main.h, right? So obviously main will need to know what the hippo engine is. And they will need to know what an app is because it's going to use, it's going to ask for an app. Now, this only comes together when we have the ability to call a method that creates our app for us, right? And in this case, in main.cpp, I have this class editor. Now the, the engine won't know that I've called it editor and then it should create a, an editor as the app that we want to support, right? So what we do is to have the engine define a method that we implement ourselves so in main.8, we're going to define that method and the method will be hippo app. So it's a method that returns a hippo app pointer called create app. Okay, and that's it. So this is what a definition of a method. It, and again, because we're a dot lib, everything gets linked in the, in the exe side of things, right? So as long as we on the main.cpp side in hippo editor implemented this method, um, we will compile just fine. So I'll add a comment here just to explain everything. So this uh, to be defined, or I guess to be implemented in the client app. So the client returns a pointer to an instance of a class derived from hippo app, right? So this is our editor class in that case. And then I'll just be clear because we're returning just a raw pointer, um, the ownership of the returned pointer belongs to hippo and will be managed as such. A lot, a lot of comments, but I do want anybody looking at the header to, to know what, what the point of this thing is, right? So, and even I'm gonna add an example, right? So example, uh, class client app is a public hippo app. Oops, yep. And then they would define hippo app star create app return new client app. 
right? So this is this is basically what we what we're gonna write. So basically exactly word for word, except we'll use editor instead. So uh, this is a concept you see used a lot in, in engines and, and other sorts of frameworks. For example, SDL actually they have a main method, and you can choose to use it. You can choose not to use it. Um, so it, it's not a new concept, and it's very much one that makes a lot of sense when you're trying to have the lifetime of your project managed by a library, but you want the flexibility for the, on the client side to be able to define what to do on, it, on initialization, on shutdown, and, and those sorts of things. So let's switch back to our main.cpp and just create that method, right? So, uh, and actually main.h includes app.h, right? Uh, main.h includes app.h, yeah. So let's just get rid of that. And uh, we have to implement hippo app star create app. And we'll return a new a new editor. Uh, so this whole concept of an app star is great, but somebody needs to hold on to our app, right? So they can call those methods. And obviously that's our engine.cpp and our engine.h. So let's have engine include hippo app. We'll have it will own an app called map. And then we need to pass it in somewhere. I guess run makes the most sense because that's the only method that main currently calls. So we'll pass in an app star app, and then we'll sort of do stuff with it on this side once we receive it. And actually, we don't even need to include this because we're always doing pointers. So we can actually just say class app, and then we'll include it from here. So there's that app here, and then yeah, we're taking in the app. So we'll come back to this in a second. I think for now, if we come back to our main.h, we can actually finish our int main, right? It's no longer just going to call run with nothing and maybe we'll even just get rid of this. Um, what we'll do is we have to first create an app. So the app star app will equal create app, right? So we're calling this method, which we don't know what it's gonna do yet, but at linker time and at, at compile time of the, of the client app, um, this will link to something that will actually return an app star. So now we have the app, and now we can call engine, and I don't even need to do this anymore, I can just say engine.run, pass in the app, and then we just delete our app. Now we're allowed to delete it because like we said, we manage the memory of this pointer. The client app should never hold on to it, they're just gonna define this so that we know what the client's starting point is. In this case, it's editor class, right? So now we own it, so we can delete it, and then we can return zero. So hopefully that all makes sense. Basically, this is the client app now, and we have access to these four things. And the engine needs to call us when it's time to initialize the client app, when it's time to shut down the client app, and then every loop for update and render. So going back to our engine.cpp, we're taking this app in, we can actually start doing these things. So first things first, nobody should ever be calling run multiple times. Um, with different apps. So let's just make sure that app, and I guess we have to initialize our app. So initialize it to null pointer. And then up here, we just want to make sure, like, let's just hippo assert that um, app, just not mapp. Right? Uh, and in this case, if it is something, then attempting to call engine run when a valid app already exists. That should be very clear if that's an issue. Now, actually, you know, we're calling hippo assert, but I don't think we've initialized our um, log manager yet. So in initialize method, I think we do it here somewhere. Uh, yeah, here. So this is actually gonna be too late now, uh, which is fine, I'll just pull it up. So before we do that, we'll just do it here. And now we'll just check again. So if not mapped, let's just uh, return. So we don't do anything, we're gonna just adhere to the first app we got. Uh, and now that we're good, m app equals app. Now in our initialize, here's where we're initializing all the engine stuff, right? So initialize SDL, create the window, initialize all of the engine managers, initialize all the input. And basically right at the bottom of this, we want to initialize our client. So again, we have this interface, we just say m app dash arrow initialize. And this will call into our main.cpp's initialize, right? So here I could have a hippo trace, and let's just say um, editor initialize. Maybe we'll do it for all of them. For shutdown, update, and render. I know these are going to get spanned a lot, but just 
for the purposes of seeing something on the screen. Uh, now we'll have to include log.h. Now this is still going to complain because speed log is not included. Yeah, it doesn't know what speed log is because it's only included on the hippo side. And I like to keep everything abstracted away from the client, right? I don't want the client to have to include all these things. Now, if I was to allow it, it would definitely be for something that isn't destructive, right? Like if I allowed the client to access SDL or GLAD, they could very much start doing things in update and render that could destroy the state that Hippo is, is setting up for you. So that's why I really don't want to expose things like SDL. Things like speed log, I'm actually not too concerned with exposing. Um, if they, if the client app wanted to leverage speed log and create their own syncs and do their own things, um, that's totally fine. Uh, they're really not going to interfere much with the hippo logging unless they were to use this this uh, hippo logger um, unless they were to use this as the name i could hide this too so the client doesn't know what it is but i'm not too concerned about the client you know trying to mess something up uh, by using our speed log name so i'm not concerned with just exposing speed log so let's do that now so just over here i'll just open my cli.bat and then i'll just open premake5.lua and so just like we include speed log here for the engine, we're going to include it down here for the client app. And we'll actually do this again in the future with things like DRI and GUI and GLM and, and a couple of other uh, sort of frameworks. But and, and that's because, again, those things aren't destructive, right? The client could start using those things and, and it really wouldn't be too much of a problem. So now I just regen. So I just uh, reloaded Visual Studio. And you can see that it's, it's fine now. It doesn't complain. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to use Hippo Trace and use Hippo Logger in order to be able to log everything properly. So that's good. Okay, so uh, on the engine side, we called MF, M, app that share initialize. Uh, so again, we initialize the app after everything else of the engine has been initialized. For shutdown, we do it in reverse order, right? So let's shut down client. So M app that share shutdown. So it cleans itself up before we do, because maybe they have a print, right? We can't shut down the log manager before we shut down the app. Otherwise, that print's going to fail. Um, so, so these sorts of things. So we'll shut down the client first, then everything about the engine. And now the only two that are left are update and render. Now, remember, we added all this stuff here for our update and render. We can actually finally pull the stuff out into the client. Um, so maybe we'll start with that. So first, let's define where the client is going to be called into, right? So here's the core loop. We pump all the events. And then obviously here is where we start defining everything so that we can render it. So our update is basically right here. And the best way to do this, uh, at least from my perspective, is to have engine have its own update and render methods, right? And nobody will ever call into these. The engine's core loop will, so they'll be private. And we'll just have void update and void render. And now we can define them down here. These are all my privates, right? Let's put it right here. Void update, and this will be engine update, and void engine render. And so in, in the engine's update, what we're going to do is we're going to call m window pump pump events, right? So update will have a window pump events in it, and eventually m app that share of update, right? And then render. Um, Render was happening sort of after all of this, where we were doing this window begin and end render stuff. So we'll just have begin render and render. I'm just going to copy instead of cut um, because I need some of that stuff there first. So we'll begin and render and render, and then in between we'll have an app that share render. Right. So the app doesn't care if we, you know, if it doesn't need to have its own begin and end. It just has a render method, which at which point everything about the window to render will have already been defined and set up, like clearing the screen. Again, the, client, the engine will handle swapping buffers at the end, right? The client should just focus on rendering what it wants to render. So now we have our update and render. Are they being called? We're calling update. We'll just call render right after. And now we can finally start pulling this stuff out of engine and into the client. So let's start with these, our shaders and our, our shader and our mesh. All right, so let's just copy that out. Um, we'll go to our main.cpp, which I'll bring over here. And it, uh, this needs to be public, by the way. <laughs> and then we'll have a private down here, as I usually do. Actually, because I'm just sort of defining this in line, I'll have my privates up top. Just easier to reason about. Um, and in our initialize, we can define all of this. 
and we'll have to just have this be a member method of the class. So mmesh equals that, and then we'll have this here, mmesh. And then same with the shader, right? All this stuff can be inline, and then uh, here we'll have mshader, and then mshader. Oops. There we go. And then mshader will be, again, another member variable. Now it's complaining because it doesn't know what uh, graphics is. I guess I could just use the namespace hippo. Okay, that's good. And then we just need to include graphics mesh and graphics shader so that we can actually use them here, right? Okay, so that looks good. So now we've defined our mesh and our shader. They're shared pointers that live within the scope of this class. So let's go back to engine and look at what's left. So yeah, we had these, so maybe these we have to also bring over and just keep them here as private values so we can use them. I just won't bother renaming these because we use them all over the place in that big block of code below. Uh, okay, cool, so now initialize looks like this and then we call up the render and this is all the render stuff, right? We get the, we do some calculations, but ultimately the point of all of this is to render down here. So this, up to this point, this is part of the update loop. Right, so here uh, we did initialize, we haven't shut down yet, update. Here's what we do for the update, and I need input. Input mouse, keyboard, joystick. Now you can see how the client is starting to include things it cares about so that it can do its work, right? Now I am just doing all this in, in main LCPP, but that, that'll be fine for now. Now get window, this needs to be engine instance get window good uh, this is M shader and this is M shader okay so you can see that we're setting these uniforms all in the update loop and then in the render loop we're gonna do this and now we can finally get rid of all of this we don't need the scoped anymore either yeah this looks much cleaner on the engine side which is great so we don't need mesh shader and we do we need input I think we update input here right yeah, so we'll, we'll initialize, so we'll keep those. We'll just get rid of the joystick since we don't initialize that one. Okay, so last thing is to bring this over to the render method, where we will create M shader, and then M render manager becomes um, engine instance get render manager submit and flush. Okay, I think that's everything. I think we've ported everything over. So we should try to just build this and see what happens. So like a lib is fine. Main LCPP should be fine. Uh, okay, unresolved external symbol, main. Let's look at main.cpp real quick. So are we including main.h? No, we're not. Did I forget to include main.h? Probably. Main.h. So that linker error was it couldn't find into main. There we go. Now it looks like we run and stop immediately. So if we just look at our main.h, this run should be a while loop in here if we initialize. So let's just step through it. F10. Mapp is null pointer, so we should. Oh. Oh, silly. I mistakenly. did this. Silly. All right, let's try this again. Okay, now we should be getting spam like crazy. So now I'll just close this. And obviously my output is gone. So maybe we'll just run it from cli.bat. So let's do cli run. And then we'll kill it. Okay. Now if we look at this, you already saw shutdown update render. So you should see editor initialize once and then update render update render all the way to the bottom once we get to our shutdown. Awesome, so now our engine is properly calling all the methods that we expected to on our client app, and we've now really have the ability to start building stuff, you know, in our own project for our own reasons, and hippo.lib is just supporting us in this case. Let me just run that one more time without it, and I just want to make sure that all my keyboard stuff's still working, which it should be. Um, yeah, this won't print anymore, it's my mouse. Left arrow up, left arrow down, right up, left down. And 
your mouse. Perfect. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.